Here's how you know a relationship is a good relationship for you. It makes you feel better about yourself, not worse. It makes you feel more loved. So if you are not getting those things, it's a relationship you can't be in. Here is today's case. So she took a trip to Houston. Didn't tell me nothing about it until like days before. Now this is a long trip to Texas, all expense paid for and not by me. But you're saying a man paid for her trip to go to Houston? I don't know if it was a man or not. What I do know it was someone that I didn't know. And you I- You didn't ask her? Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Faye from Orlando, Florida. Hi, Faye. Welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Westby versus Wilson. Thank you, Juan. Mr. Theo Westby. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought MJ Wilson. Yes, Your Honor. To court today, the two of you have been in a relationship for over a year, but now you say there are a number of problems. You say she's sneaky, jealous, and unmotivated, and you're here, you want to defend yourself, and you have some allegations of your own. Of course. I'll start with you, sir. Tell me what's happening. All right, yes, Your Honor, yes. Well, me and MJ uh, met at work, and I am an on-air personality. Mm. Uh, she's an assistant. And Is it radio? Radio, yes, ma'am. Uh, and so I was inside the studio uh, seeing her. She was very cute or whatever the case may be. I was married, uh, still married on paper legally. And so me and MJ decided to date. And even though I was married and we couldn't actually be together, we had to kind of keep it on a DL, mm. I still kind of did things with her after moving out of my home and then moving in with her. But now the but two of you are open and in a committed relationship, but you haven't finalized the divorce papers? Is that what it is? Not yet, because I still, I couldn't afford it at the time okay. and still can't really afford it at the time, but I am done with my wife and I do want to move on with her. But today I'm bringing her today to a divorce court because I think she's lazy, she's bratty. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I just, I, I just don't feel like this is it. I feel like we butt heads. She's a beautiful woman, but I just don't know if this is it. This is probably going downhill, and that's why I'm here. Ms. Wilson, what do you have to say about that? It's going downhill because he's allowing it to go downhill. Mm. It probably wouldn't go downhill if he would file for a divorce. I mean, that's half the battle right there. That's not true. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you say that's one of the big issues, that's understandably. Super... Um, it's a super big issue. Mm -hmm. I can't be with a man who's already with someone else legally. But, but you are with him. Yeah, you but I can't fully be with, with him, you know? So that's the reason why some of my stepbacks are, you know, how it is. You know, I can't give you 110 if you can't really give me 110. That's not true, Your Honor. Why do you say that? The reason I feel like it's not true is because she decided to be with me regardless. Even though I feel she's done some things I in mean, the I mean, I decided to be with you because... Yes, yeah, she did. And I have oh proof. Gosh. Let's just, for, for example, the trip to Houston that she took. Ah, didn't think I'd bring that up, did you? Whatever. So she took a trip to Houston. Mm -hmm. Didn't tell me nothing about it until like days before, two or three days before I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Now this is a long trip to Texas, paid for, all expense paid for, and not by me. And from some random friend that I've never met, and then on top of that, she's there, I try to call her, she's not answering the phone, and then when she gets back, yeah, I see a little bit of a video that I have to help her edit, but, I don't really hear anything about this trip. So it's like, what is it? And I understand you said the video editing because you're a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. You do work videos yes, on YouTube. Moments with MJ is my YouTube channel. But you're saying a man paid for her trip to go to Houston? I don't know if it was a man or not. What I do know it was someone that I didn't know. And you I... You didn't ask her? Well, I asked her about the trip, but I didn't want to get too much into it. I wanted Why? Her... Because I wanted her to enjoy her trip. I didn't want to get too much into it. Yeah. But she so told me what it was. Mad. I accepted the lie. I okay. accepted yes. what, I accepted so, so what you, it was. So, so you can't do that and then come on here and be all mad about okay, it. Okay, first well, off, I'm going to tell the money. story how it actually happens. I have a best friend of 20 years who is a female, by the way. Mm -hmm. We were actually out shopping this day. Huh, but you don't remember? We were out shopping and my best friend called for her birthday dinner that um, following weekend. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, was I available? Was I free? She wanted to book my flight. I'm like, absolutely, I want to be there for you and thanks for booking my 
my flight. I tell him immediately, the no, same she day. No, she didn't. That I, my friend bought my flight, so I'm gonna go to Texas. Now, some time passes, but I think the day of, or maybe the day before, I'm having a conversation with him, and I'm like, you better call me every day when I'm out there. I wanna hear from you, I wanna talk to you. Mm -hmm. His response is no, because you're out of town, you need to have fun with your friends, I'm not gonna be, you know, contacting you. So I don't, well, he, he didn't call. That's what he said. Yes, that's what he said. That's so why. I get out there. He also suggests that I record a lot of stuff so I can, you know, put some footage together. Okay. So I did, I recorded a lot of footage, and that's the footage he helped well, actually, I edited it, but he just, you know... So, sir, around. you said that you did not hear from her. I didn't hear from she her. She didn't respond she to didn't your calls. She didn't respond to my text between, So, what she's saying is completely <clears throat> different. What she's saying is is very, very the light side of her going on a trip. I didn't okay, hear from so her. Okay, so then what no, happened I'm... to the part when you called and I was on the phone with you for two minutes and you was like, I'm gonna call you back and you never called back? So, if you were so concerned... Because she didn't, have anything like to, she didn't have anything to say. It, it, listen, it sounds like oh the two gosh. of you have some fundamental differences and your recollection of this trip to Houston. Yeah, and you're not going to come to an agreement on it. No. One of you is not being forthcoming. Well, I feel like she's doing things for money. Doing what for money? I don't know. It's the fact that she has things. Like, she has bills. And... We I'll, all do. We all do, <laughs> all right? But I'll try to pay those bills. I'll say, hey, you know, what's your... this bill looking like this month? What's that bill looking like this month? And I'll say, hey, let me go ahead and take care of that. But she'll say, nah, don't worry about it or I'll get to it, or, you know, maybe I'll, I'll... She'll do something else, but she'll go get the money from a friend. of her. Right, so this... she'll pay her own bills. Check this I out. Mean, this one situation, this one situation... That's just not right her at ex, all. Well, I don't know if he's her ex, but you can tell when somebody's like somebody from a mm -hmm. past. From a long time ago, it didn't work, all right? What are you saying is happening? I'm saying that the guy really likes her, still likes her, and now he's trying to give her money to pay her bills. How I don't do you know, know this? She's told me that her friend has come past the house before and he's dropped off money. And I'm like, well, what was he there for? Oh, he just gave me a couple dollars. He didn't really mean anything by it. It was just, you know, because he just wanted to give it to me. But I'm like, anybody just, they don't just give you money. You okay. gotta get something in return. And she's saying it's not anything in return, and I believe it is. Juan and I love friends who drop by our house and give us money. Now, recently, a month ago, my brother passed. So he handed me some money and said, this is for whatever y'all need. She's telling some lies. So you're saying she never told you that? I'm saying she never said it that way. So one of you in this courtroom today is just an outright liar. Someone you used to date. No. Why is he coming by giving no. you money? No one I used to date. It is a, a friend. friend. Yes, a so male friend. So why is a friend? Because listen, Juan and I love friends mm -hmm. who drop by our house and give us money. Yeah, so let me tell you the story. So, so I have tell a male me what friend. Happened. We've been friends since middle school. Now, recently, a month ago, my brother passed. So oh, he was sorry coming, to hear that. Yeah, so he was coming to check on me like a good friend would do. Mm -hmm. And because of a funeral and services and things can get expensive, and he recently, four years, had his own brother pass away, he knows how hard it can be. So he handed me some money and said, this is for whatever y'all need. She's telling some lies. So you're saying she never told you that? I'm saying she never said it that way. She's telling you something There's no totally other different from what she's telling what me. Way did she, what, what way did she tell you? You know how y'all women is, man. Y'all say I something halfway, and then us men supposed to put it together through sir? osmosis. Sir, sir, nope. No, nope, we are not going to do that. We are not going to go into stereotypical tropes today in divorce court. I'm asking you specifically about your woman, not all women. She said that it was just somebody... It was a, it was a, I knew that it was a friend of hers. I knew that it was an ex-friend of hers or somebody that... The reason to, that, she, that he the gave her money. the reason she didn't give. She didn't give you that reason that, that she's today. telling me right now. She didn't give me that. What wow. she gave me was... He gave me some money because... Let me tell you because something. It was, it, all that... Uh, the other stuff that she did, no. So one of you in this courtroom today is just an outright liar. Your Honor, and, and the only two people who know the truth are the two people standing in front of me. So you're gonna have to make some real decisions about this relationship when you walk out of these doors today. Can I give you another example, Your Honor? Ride share, all right? I commend her. She, she gets out there, she busts her butt, she try to do what she can. But sometimes I don't feel like she's being truthful on where she is. This one time, she said she was doing ride share, and I was at the studio. And so she hit me, and I'm on the phone with her. I'm like, hey, what's up, babe? She's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm tired, but I'm gonna go do some ride share. I'm like, all right, bet. Now, me, 
being a person I am, I'm like, nah, her voice sounds a little too relaxed to be heading out to do some tag on ride share. So how, how, how should her voice sound when she's going to, a, to dr drive for Uber? Just a little more, Lyft. just a little more enthusiastic about, you know, it sounds like you up. It sounds like you've dressed. It sounds like you're about to get ready to jump in a what car. Is, what does is, what is someone sounding like they, they're dressed sound like? They drop their phone. Oh, I forgot something. Uh, let me run back upstairs real quick. The, the rustling, you know, dropping something. You know, it's just, it's just all that to get ready. You know what I'm saying? It's like what I normally would hear from her on the phone getting ready, I didn't hear it that day. So she went on ahead and she did the, she said she was going to do ride share. Now she called me probably, I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe an hour later, talking about I'm tired, I'm headed back to the house. And I was like, huh, you tired, you headed back to the house? How you tired, you headed back to the house and you going to do, oh, you going to do ride share. Now ride share, and I know you got to be out there at least for about two or three hours to make you about $20. Now how she back in about 30 minutes or an hour or something like that, she tired. And then she didn't make any money. So, and what do you think happened in that 30 minutes I think that, that she went and she seen someone else. You have made a lot of assumptions. Do you have a complex, you think, because you were married and you were sneaking around with her in the beginning of your relationship? No, I don't think so, Your Honor. I think it's more or less, you know, as a man trying to move on from a hurt relationship and mm -hmm. trying to move on to the next. Yeah. A woman who says that she's there to be able to console and, and be able to be there for you to help you transition either to the next or either just out. I think that she being there wasn't the there that I needed. And me having the assumptions that I have is just her shadiness. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if she wasn't so shady, if she didn't lie about a lot of things, maybe if you answered the phone every once in a while, maybe, maybe I wouldn't be feeling the way that I feel. But this is the way I feel. Men, we don't get a chance to have emotions. We don't get a chance to, to, to be soft or be wooed as much as we like to. And I don't feel like that's what's coming from her. So what's coming from her is everything that's opposite. And it's making me feel, well, not everything, but it's some things that's opposite and it's just making me feel different. He doesn't even tell me he's coming to the house, doesn't call, doesn't text, says the guy who always, you know, wants to call someone. He doesn't even hit me up, but he busts up in my bedroom as if something's going on. Like, the way the door flung open, you would have thought it was a movie. Did you, did you bust up in her room? I felt like somebody was there. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free, 1-877-311-2222, or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Ms. Wilson, have you been stepping outside of the relationship, seeing no. other people romantically? No. Not and once? Since I, I believe what it all stems from. I shouldn't answer that. Is... Ma'am? I didn't even hear the question. Not, I not once? No, not once. Okay. Not once! So, what I believe the issue is, is that he's been cheated on a lot throughout all of his marriages and relationships. Mm -hmm. So, he portrays that on me or something, like, that's what I'm gonna do. So, even one day, he comes, he doesn't even tell me he's coming to the house, doesn't call, doesn't text, says the guy who always, you know, wants to call someone. He doesn't even hit me up, but he busts up in my bedroom as if something's going on. Like, the way the door flung open, mm -hmm. you would have thought it was a movie. Mm. I'm literally sitting there watching a movie, looking at him like, what? He was like he was expecting to see something. No, what, what did he say? not no. telling me. He didn't say anything. He just stood there like a weirdo, like he does when I invite him to network events, and he just stands around like a weirdo. When you invite me, how about she's the did one you, who did goes? Did you bust up sit, in a room? How about this is the one that goes to sit in a corner at a rooftop party? All right, my homeboy invited me and her out to a rooftop party. So she goes and sit right in the corner, and I actually submitted a a, a, a picture to the court to let everybody see this. You that took a she's... photo of her sitting yes, in the corner? Yes, I took a photo of her, and this is a picture of her sitting in the corner. And I look cute. Like she usually does, all right? She'll go, she'll go to parties and she'll say, I don't feel like talking, I don't feel like being warm today. So you, you decide to pull out your phone and take a photo of her sitting in a chair with I her foot up. I actually snuck up on her and took this picture, yes. And what did you project this moment meant? Well, I felt like this moment documented her unwillingness to be a couple at an event. Okay. Uh, I feel like we've planned things. We talk about what we're going to do before we actually go places. Mm -hmm. oh and this God. particular event, rooftop parties, e networking events, it's, it's our opportunity to mingle, to go around, get phone numbers, talk about, you know, things that we want to do with people. But if you're going to go off and sit off in a corner, that doesn't make sense. Did, did, you, did you bust up in her room? I ain't bust up in her room. The door kind of, you got to push it a little bit. Okay. All right, so yeah, it, just it the might way seem you like I was, the door. right, right. It might seem like I was busting in a room, but I was actually stepping in there because 
I felt like somebody was there. <laughs> That's yeah. why I asked you. Did you bust up in the room? Yeah, That's I mean, exactly but what I didn't you bust did. up in the room. It was just kind of like. Why did you feel like somebody was there? Because I had. She calls me paranoid, but the paranoia. Really? The paranoia <laughs> comes from not answering a phone call, not answering a what text. What was she message. doing when you when you when you came up in the door? When I came in there, she was laying there. Watching a movie. She was just laying there. But ma'am, you also submitted evidence, a video. You want me to see? Yes. Okay. Let me take a look at that. You do have everything, and really quickly. Please don't shoot me, executive producer, but I'm gonna leave the set. Oh. And I'm back. What is this a video of? This is a video of him being controlling. That's a video of her uh, not listening. I didn't see him in the video. Well, I'm, I'm gonna explain it to you. So, he doesn't like for me to get up off of the set when I'm, you know, doing the show. But the show, mind you, is pre recorded, so we're not live, so it's. It can be edited out. So, you know, it's not really a big deal, but for him, it's like everything has to go by the book. Even when I have an idea to implement into this show, um, for example, I had a fun little 10 second random twerk that I wanted to put into the show to keep it loose, you know, keep the girls fun for a couple of seconds. You know, mm -hmm. it just comes in in the middle of the interview, you have no control over it. So, when the music supposedly supposed to drop, me and my guests was, you know, dance for 10 seconds and then go back into the interview. Mm -hmm. He didn't like that idea. He wants just full control over everything everything. So that clip was to show me saying my executive producer is going to be upset with me because initially he would be upset. <laughs> okay. You've got some work to do in your relationship. You both have your own things going on in your careers and I understand you're trying to do some things together now, but... You have some baggage that you've got to unpack, Mr. Westby. Everything you've told me today, sir, it's been a lot of much ado about nothing. You're bum rushing in the room. You think somebody's there. You were wrong. You're questioning her because she's going to drive and you said she didn't sound like she was getting ready to go. You said that she went to Houston. Didn't seem to be an issue all this time and then you're so upset about it in court. And then money from a friend and she, tell, she fills in the details about what happened. If you don't want to trust her, then you really can't be in this relationship because everything you're doing is just drawing a wedge between the two of you and it's undermining the fact that you two are trying to build something together. And I hear this a lot in divorce court when people are navigating going through divorces because you're really unraveling lives. But I don't think that's the bigger issue for you. I think it's emotional unraveling that you've got to deal with because you can't make your future relationships pay for what's happened to you in the past. I think you rushed into a relationship too quickly. You weren't ready yet. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you still aren't. Sometimes we need time to be by ourselves. No one in this courtroom has ever said, I wish I'd move faster. But I have a plethora of people who've come in and said they wish they'd taken more time. Take some time out for yourself and find out what's really going on with you. Because I would hate for you to ruin a good relationship because of things you haven't addressed from the past. You seem like a nice person, but sir, you jump into a lot of conclusions. I wish the both of you well. Good luck. When Judge told me to unpack my bags, I really felt like she was probably leading somewhere. Uh, and probably needed to get myself together and stop doing a lot of the assuming that I'm doing because I probably will lose something good. When Judge Faith said that we had compatibility issues, I somewhat disagree because I don't think we even got this far if we wasn't compatible at all. I just feel like we just gotta put in a little bit more work on the communication part. For me going forward, I'm definitely gonna continue to talk to Theo because I feel like we have something really, really special if we can just get past the past. She gotta answer her phone though, text messages. Mm -hmm.